Well, thank you very much for the invitation to be here in this uh, quite interesting and incredible seminar. And let me tell you that I have learned a lot this morning and this afternoon. And I would like to comment what are, in my view, from Latin America, the next steps for the European Union's soft power. And I think that the Sergei introduction was an excellent one. And I would like to start saying, look, soft power is based on the power of your example. Quite different from hard power, because hard power is based in the example of your power. Aircraft, weapons, etc. And you here in Europe, during the last 50 years, have had a diminishing role with regard to her power, but a much increasing role with regard to soft power. Why? Because the power of your example has been amazing. In terms of what you have accomplished, and what you have accomplished are accomplished first because you have principles, values, that are the basis for everything. And the process of integration that you have been able to accomplish is the major instrument of your soft power in today's world. Down there in Latin America, we keep looking to what you have been able to accomplish. I do not know of any other integration process where you have been able, because you believe in inclusion of all countries, that you are going to be able to have structural funds with regard to those countries that are in a smaller level of development. Not a single integration scheme in any other part of the world has that. And then when you learn that a country like Spain received more than $200,000 in less than 10 years after 1986, my goodness, that are big numbers. It's not only soft power, but it's a very concrete example that you are delivering. With something very important, flexibility. You discover very early in those stages of integration that one size doesn't fit all. And if you are talking about a common currency, my goodness, the Bank of England say, no, thanks. I will preserve my sterling pound. Mr. Keynes used to say that never, never give up the Bank of England. Okay. But in today's world, then, there is no question that, as this morning Massimo D'Alema reminds us, that economic prosperity has led many to forget that soft power is mainly based on economic success and political will. And that's it political will. And integration is not something that is done by the market forces. It's done by political will. And you have been able, since the beginning of this process, to understand that political will is essential in order to control market forces. And let me tell you that all of us know that in 1989, half of the library came down with the Berlin Wall. But let us not forget that other part of the other library, this part here to my right side, the, neo, the extreme neoliberalism also came down because of the crisis of Lehman Brothers and because of the crisis that now we have here. And there was some sort of surrendering to the market forces. And this is what we are paying. And let me also add, with regard to the euro and the euro crisis, that there is an original thing. I don't understand how it's possible to have just one, one central bank, one monetary policy, as 16 different fiscal policies. This is the original sin. This is why I used to say someday in, 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 a, in, a, in a short, for a paper, I say, look, the problem is not in Athens. I think that this is in Brussels or in Frankfurt. But the problem began about uh, 12 years ago. 
After you say this, there is very clear that to solve the issue, you need to gain political will. And political will means that in some way or another, you will have to have some kind of fiscal policy integration in the near future. After saying that, I will say, look, I think that the soft power of Europe now is pending in the way that you are going to be able to solve this issue. Soft power, unfortunately, is depending in what happened with the Euro. Because the Euro came out at the very end symbolizing the success of what you have been accomplished during 50 years. And you are not allowed to fail because you have been for Latin America, for Africa, for Asian countries, for many of those countries, an example of how to do things in the right way. An example of how, at the end, political will has to be above the market forces in the economic sphere. And in today's world, you keep talking every day how the market is going to react. And I wonder, where should I call to know what the answer is going to be from the market tomorrow morning, other than open the paper? And therefore, if we are talking about the next steps, I will say step number one, this issue has to be resolved in the right way. Number two, I think that we fail, we surrender to the market financial, to the, to the forces of the financial market, and I think that what uh, Ana Gomez has just said is correct. Many of us also probably was too much influenced by those neoliberalism forces. But then we have to recognize, number three, that new actors are coming. And this new actor has been talking in the morning with China, with India, and uh, I think that our president from Mauritius reminds us very clearly that because now there are new actors, it's more important for us in our own regions that you, Europe, became very much engaged. And this means then to recognize that the actors, the regional actors, are different ones. Now the question is not what is going to be the policy of Europe for Latin America or for Africa. The question is what is going to be the policy of Europe with Latin America in Latin America and with Africa in Africa. And that's a big difference. Are we going to be able to define a common agenda? What is in your interest and in our interest? Yes, I know. Migration has not been pronounced this morning or this evening here. But migration in Latin America is quite an issue, and I'm sure that in Africa also. And as long as here in Europe or in the United States there, migration is a domestic policy issue, then we are not going to understand each other. Because it cannot be that everything is globalized, everything moves from one continent to the other with the click in the computer, and the only thing that cannot move is the human being. That kind of globalization cannot exist. It's not possible. Human being has been moving since the last 30,000 years. And therefore, migration, what about drugs? What about uh, climate change? Energy? What about trade? What about the new financial architecture and this division that you mentioned this morning that an American has to be the president in the World Bank and then a European in the IMF? That is extremely old fashioned, something that is coming from the Second World War that represented the world in 1945. My goodness. And therefore, to what extent is possible then? when we are talking with the new elements of emerging, like the responsibility to protect, like the human rights policy that is going to be defined next Monday has been remembered today, until what extent all this agenda has to take it into account with regard to the soft power, the other emerging actors. And therefore, it seems to me that uh, 
it's very clear that you have been able to have a tremendous soft power because the power of what you have been able to accomplish. And there is no question that what you have been able to accomplish may be, again, a tremendous soft power if you are able to overcome today's present transition circumstances. Final point, I do think that the values, and we would like to talk a little bit more tomorrow, with regard to global governance, we need to have similar values. And those similar values are the ones that are very much entrenched in the idea of progressive policies. And this is where I do think really that if we look to the future, then it's through progressive thinking that we are going to have some kind of global governance with regard to the major issues of today. Because in this 21st century, there is no question that either we have a, some kind of global governance with regard to many of these issues, or it's going to be very difficult to understand between different regions in the world. But I do think that with regard to soft power, the example of Europe has been so strong that uh, it's not possible for you not to remain an important regional soft power making what should be the right road for the rest of the world. Thank you.